you're you know you're a prolific, prolific prolific author you've got many books out at the moment so i've been doing some historical reading of how we wrote about gold in the 1970s when uh nixon removed the gold backing from the us dollar so i've got some really old gold books here it's interesting how they talk about gold and how you know when these books are written in the early 70s uh inflation and stagflation hadn't yet taken hold of the us then we've right. got a new case for gold that you wrote now i would say having read these ones this book perfectly encapsulates what happened in the 70s however you're really still making the same argument to own physical gold in this book from uh, these books that i've been reading that were written 50 years ago tell me how have people decoupled from understanding gold and obviously i think they should actually go get your book so they can understand even more so why they should um own physical gold but how did we decouple over the past 50 years from understanding the importance of gold in our portfolio to now less than 1% of Australians own it that's a great question and i do uh, cover that in the book the new case for gold i i keep thinking that archaeologists will unearth some site in near ancient babylon and we'll find the old case for gold we'll find clay <laughs> tablets talking about the benefits of gold i'm not sure the argument has changed much in 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 uh, three or four thousand years but um but but here's what has changed i talk about gold bull markets and gold bear markets and i start my analysis in 1971 and i don't have to go through all the, all that data but that's that's how i think about it and you're like well jim why 1971 why not before that and of course 1971 as, as you point out shay was when nixon uh stop redeeming dollars for gold it was over the americans could uh, americans couldn't even own gold in 1971 it was contraband it was like drugs or you know machine guns or something but foreign trading partners could redeem dollars for gold up until 1971 and then nixon said no more and then that was the final decoupling but prior to that um gold was actually money in other words uh with under bretton woods gold was pegged to $35 an ounce Prior to Bretton Woods, it was pegged at um, twenty dollars and sixty-seven cents an ounce. We've gone back to the nineteen twenties earlier through most of the nineteenth century for the United States and sterling. I think it was four seventy-five. It could be off a little bit on that, but it was four four pounds and and change. And as late as World War One, say nineteen thirteen, if you were a Brit and you were getting on the steamer from London to you know, at the time Bombay, today Mumbai, um, you took a purse of uh, British sovereigns. British sovereign is it's about uh, about eight grams, a little bit less. You know, it's not an ounce, it's a quarter ounce because an ounce is almost too much. Even even today, what are you gonna do with a one ounce coin? It's worth, you know, almost $2,000. Uh, you know, you're not gonna use that for to buy a pack of gum. But, but in the day, there was the quarter ounce, which today would be, you know, like a $500 bill. So it's still a significant amount of money. Uh, but you could get on the steamer in Southampton and get off in Bombay at the time. And it was money good. You could take that British sovereign and spend it anywhere. And same thing in Singapore and Hong Kong and Japan or all around the world. So gold was actually money. So it wasn't a question of, oh, what's the exchange rate? It was the gold was the money. And people thought about it by weight. They said, oh, a sovereign, that's eight grams of gold. So that's worth, you know, that'll get you whatever. So, uh, and that was true throughout history. And so it's really only since 1971, when we decoupled completely in terms of an exchange rate that you have to think about, um, uh, you know, well, what's the dollar price of gold? Because it's not fixed. But but okay, well, what happened to the memory? What happened to the 3,000 years I just talked about? Well, the answer is it happened in stages and it actually took, it took about 75 years. So it began in 1914. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. Began in 1914. 1914 was the outbreak of World War One. Everybody needed gold. There was a there was a run on gold, um, and countries needed gold because they knew they would need gold to pay for the war to try to win the war. Whether it didn't matter if you're Germany, UK, or whoever. And remember, the United States was neutral. The United States did not get in the war until 1917. The war started in 1914. So for those first two and a half years, New York was a money center to all of Europe, to to all the belligerents. Uh, so everyone scrambled for gold. So if you were a citizen, you handed, they asked you to bring your gold to the bank and they gave you paper money. And but people did it out of a patriotic, it's existential. War is not a normal market. You're going to, if you lose the war, you got bigger problems than your gold. And so people put the gold in the banks. What did the banks do? 
they melted it down and made 400 ounce bars. And they said, don't worry, your money's backed by the gold, but keep using that paper money, uh, but it's redeemable for gold. But oh, by the way, they're 400 ounce bars. Nobody walks around with a 400 ounce bar in her purse. I'm sure you've seen one and I have as well. They're, they're heavy, they weigh about 35 pounds. You don't walk around with them. So all of a sudden the, the gold was still there and the paper money was backed by gold in theory, but the gold had disappeared into the banks. That's step one. Step two, and this happened in the 1930s, the central banks took the gold from the commercial banks. So first the commercial banks took the gold from the people. Then the central banks took the gold from the commercial banks and the Federal Reserve System sold all the banks. Hey, send your, send your gold to the regional Federal Reserve Bank. And of course, most of it went to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. So now it's not even in the banks anymore, right? But you're still walking around thinking your paper money is somehow attached to gold, but people haven't seen gold for a while, uh, unless you're a collector. Step three, uh, the United States Treasury and the finance ministries took it from the central bank. The 1934, the United, the United States Treasury seized the gold of the Federal Reserve System. Bearing in mind, the Federal Reserve System is privately owned. Um, and they gave them a gold certificate. And you go to the, um, the Federal Reserve System website today and, you know, hunt around a little bit on the links and find the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve and it's there. And look on the, look in the assets. And the first line item is gold certificate and it's valued at 11 billion dollars but that's because they value the gold of 42 dollars an ounce if you and i've revalued it the answer is that today's market that that 11 billion is actually worth 470 billion so the fed has a hidden asset of 450 odd billion that's not on the balance sheet represented by a gold certificate but it's not the gold the treasury has the gold and by the way, where do we keep our gold? I'm talking about the United States. The Treasury owns the gold. The Fed has a paper certificate. Um, the gold is on two army bases, West Point and Fort Knox. So I would say the army has the gold. Uh, but 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 my point, uh, Shay, is that the gold has gone from citizens walking around having it in, in your purse to commercial banks, to central banks, to finance ministries held on an army base. It's still there. The gold didn't disappear. Um, but nobody talks about it and everyone pretends it's not money, but of course it's money. Um, but, but meanwhile, what's happened to this, the, the, the civilian population, the citizens, we stopped talking about it. We stopped saying it. We stopped learning about it. What to do in such a situation, inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free insider club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.